Warning. The following video contains very little deck tech information. If you're squeamish about cards being damaged or destroyed, please close the video and walk away now. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com, your place to explore the game. Hi, I'm Mr. P again. Uh, we're at Gen Con 2015 and I'm here with the Chromat the Laundromat deck. Do you care about sleeve legality? Mr. P cares deeply about sleeve legality in the sense that I like to find cards that are not sleeve legal um, because then I feel very satisfied when I mystical tutor and I'm like, mystical tutor for that thing. It's going to be lovely. So anyways, the laundromat deck is a nice collection of cards that I've acquired that seem like they've had better days and are now, um, you know, now they look like this forest here. I play forest because sometimes I need mana. Um, oh, here's a nice expensive card. Uh, this card spent about a year under the floor mat of somebody's car, and um, it's now worth nothing. It's good. Um, oh, here's the story. So the genesis of this deck was um, my friend Jeef was delivering pizzas, and he was driving through Northampton, Massachusetts, and um, he stopped on King Street, and he opened the door to deliver the pizzas, and he didn't notice, but his Animar Soul of Elements deck fell out onto the street. And about an hour later, he was driving down King Street, and he was like, oh, look, magic cards. And he stopped, and then he was like, wait, these are my magic cards. So sometimes you need to use your island as a doorstop. I know I do. Um, and uh, so he picked up his cards, and he was very sad, and, oh, hello. Um, and so then he had this giant box of totally busted up cards. He didn't really know what to do with them, and so I said, ah, this is a legacy staple. Um, so he didn't know what to do with his cards, so I was like, hey, I'll take those off your hands. And that was the beginning of the laundromat deck. The difficult thing about when you're playing the laundromat deck is that it's important to have mana, and um, since it's hard to have destroyed cards that are basic lands, because most people, when they destroy, like, you know, their, their beta underground sea, they sort of feel bad about getting rid of it, because, you know, so they keep it around and then they give it to me. Um, whereas, like, the basic lands, you just throw them away for the most part, so um, this guy will steal your stuff. Um, very nice. Um, so, really, the mana base is kind of difficult. This Masker Worm is really kind of disappointingly not destroyed the way that I want it to be, but okay. It's fine. We'll kill your tokens. Um, and so, but I do have a nice collection of basic lands that have been, uh, you know, left under things or run over by a truck or something. Um, oh, mana fixing. This taps for two colors um, and is, it's okay. Um, oh, come back, Laundromat deck. You did it. Um, I, this makes sapperlings, okay, um, that taps for blue mana. Uh, this is a really, this is like, I feel like when, if you started playing Magic when Ice Age was out, um, this is probably what all your cards looked like because you carried them around your pocket and didn't use sleeves. Um, this has a lot of text on it. Um, the sleeve legality thing is very important when you play double-faced cards because you want to know that you're going to draw a really busted up Daybreak Ranger in the turn before you do. I think I can recognize this one from the where. No, I can't. Um, oh, it's an island. Good point. Um, that's a swamp. That taps for black. Uh, this taps for any color and is destroyed. Um, okay, so I played a game yesterday. I won a game with this yesterday, which is the first time in history that that's happened. And part of it was that um, this uh, plague wind here, which has a nice crease going right there, um, I actually cast this twice in a single game. I was very confused when I drew it the second time. I was like, how did I get two of those? Um, oh, this is contested for a reason. Um, this putrefies, somebody spilled their soda on it. Very, uh, it's, you can sort of use this to drink soda out. It's like a bowl. It's good. Um, that puts cards into play. Um, 
Oh, this is also the seed. This was part of the Animar deck that got left on uh, King Street in Northampton. You can sort of, can we get a nice, it's hard to see really how destroyed these cards are, which is a bummer. Um, this was what won me the game yesterday. So if you think that Consecrated Sphinx doesn't always just win you games of EDH, even when you're playing a deck completely made of destroyed cards, it actually does. Um, this one needs no introduction. Hi. I actually, when I see this on the top of my deck, I'm like, Plock Worm incoming, baby. Hope I got triple green. I usually don't. Uh, Quaggy Pants here. He's, uh, this definitely, like, got run over by a car a lot. So, uh, this got chewed on by a dog. <laughs> Sorry. This one again, like, the corner of this, like, hi, how you doing? Um, gets me my man is when I need them. Um, yeah, that's a basic, that's not interesting. Uh, this Wrath of God is, again, like, kind of disappointing like I think it's probably got left on a table with some water in it not really like the level of destruction I'm looking for uh, conundrum sphinx uh, his conundrum was that he was lying on King Street getting run over by cars um, faithless looting somebody uh, apparently had a poor draft experience also you know legacy staple that taps for black <laughs> so does that Oh, this is a nice win condition if your opponents do nothing. And, um, yeah, also, yeah, got a nice fold there. We'll take it. Um, oh, full art forests are pretty hot. Um, I like to put this on my opponent's busted up creatures, so then I gain life from that. Um, that's a basic land. Um, oh, this also is, like, uh, I think somebody had, like, a, a limited deck that was on, the, I think it was my friend Louie, um, and he poured water not intentionally like I would part of the the goal of the laundromat deck is you can't just that's expensive or was expensive okay um part, what part of the goal of the laundromat deck is like I can't actually destroy the cards myself as much as I want to I really want to take like you know power nine and pour you know pour whiskey on them um but it's the whole trick is that it has to be organic like it has to just be like you had this won me that game yesterday I was, oh, it meant that I could ignore my terrible mana base and just put Consecrated Sphinx into play on turn 5. Um, yeah. So, the point is, it has to just organically be that, like, you destroyed your patron of the Orochi because you were mad at it or didn't do a good enough job. Um, you look at the swamp, you're like, that's pretty bad, but then you're like, that's really bad, okay. Um, oh, mana fixing. Jackpot. Yep. You still can read the mana cost, which is a bummer, because if you couldn't, you could just cast it for free, because it has no mana cost anymore. This was a Mentor of the Meek, but it's actually an inspiration, and it also says... Parchanson. Parchanson's a word I'm not familiar with, but... Yeah, okay. Uh, that got water spilled on it, I think. This goes to the face. Alright, uh, this is Mirror Battlesphere? Yep, okay. See, this is another example of a card that not really sleeve legal for the most part because if you were going to play in like a legacy tournament your you know metal worker deck i wouldn't play this one also it's hard to read um if the four wasn't readable there you could write like seven thousand and people would be confused um you got to recur stuff sometimes oh okay this is the only this is the only edh deck that i will play time stretch in i hate this card i think it's useless and makes games totally unfun but when it has no corners and it looks like that, then, uh, yeah, it's a good card. Um, that's a portal card, yeah. Uh, so apparently I have a bunch of bringers that, like, are busted up. Uh, this one, yeah. Okay, that was fun. Um, that taps for mana. Uh, Conquering Manticore. Also King Street Laundromat. Uh, this, I can tell you without looking at it, that it's a swamp. Okay. Um, this one is also a swamp. Ooh, we got a nice little action going on there. Um, th oh, wait, this is a Migba? Yeah, a Mig... Amubga, yeah, okay, he's not good. Uh, oh, this is a Jared, was marinated in some iced tea for a while. Um, also, compliments to my friend Louie. Louie, you did it, you're great. Um, this is, uh, oh, this is a uh, dual land. It taps for two colors and um, is destroyed. This is Kozilek? No, Source of Plowshares. There is actually Kozilek coming, I'm sorry. Um, this is again, like most cards from 1994 just look like this anyways, because, uh, you know, playing unsleeved. Um, this is my favorite tech when people are just 
aggressively ignoring you because you're playing the laundromat deck and then they're like tooth and nail entwined. You're like, this was left in a puddle. Um, this card's also expensive. All right. Um, this, yeah. Okay, well, there's something going on down at the bottom of this thing here. This is another one of these kind of like, hey, how you doing? Um, let's see, what's this? Oh, that taps for two colors. Uh, Elderwood Scion? No, sorry, Marshall's Anthem. Um, <laughs> it's hard to know what's going on here in this artwork. It looks sort of white and blue. Um, it's hard to know what's going on there, too. This is uh, Taps for Mana. Um, oh, I like this one because it's destroyed. Um, again, like, you know, a lot of, like, these aren't really expensive, but they're sort of like you, if you dropped this in your pool, like, you'd feel bad. I mean, that wouldn't be great. This is a Henge of Ramos. I know without turning it over. Do you know what Henge of Ramos does? It's awful. Um, yeah, okay. It can, however, you can sort of put it back into its original form like this, if you like, which is high. And then you, woo, okay, that was fun. Um, let's put Henge of Ramos. Get back in the sleeve there, buddy. Okay, you're done. Come on. Okay, Henge of Ramos. Still bad. Um, that's an island. That's also an island. This is, uh, you know, 85% of a soul ring. Oh, sorry, that was my arm, apparently. Um, no, more than 85%. This is probably 95% of a soul ring. Um, I don't need this part, though, because it doesn't. that part doesn't tap for two. So, um, oh, sorry, world. Okay. Um, also legacy staple. Um, Oh, there's a planeswalker in here. I'd forgotten that this card was in here because uh, you know, it, if you make you can it can sort of stand up on its own like a little tent. Um, it doesn't need to though. Um, that goes with scalding tarn. Okay, uh, Kozilek. No, oh, Thorn, I actually bought this. I paid money for this. It was in the scratch and end box uh, at Gen Con like maybe three years ago. I think I paid two dollars for it and worth every penny because now I can find my busted up lands. There he is. Hey, uh, this is again a card that I refuse to play in EDH other than here. Um, as you can see, the Annihilator thing is pretty appropriate because this thing is annihilated um, and good riddance. So, um, yeah, this allowed me to shuffle Plaguewind back in for another go yesterday. Pretty tight. Oh, Vengevine, hi. You guys remember when this was worth a lot of money? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that this probably got destroyed around that time, so it's sort of like doubly tragic. Um, he's okay. Uh, that taps for mana. That's a swamp. Uh, the mana base here is entirely based on which basic lands I had that were busted up, and uh, you know, so I have a lot of swamps for some reason. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, Rubini is Soul Singer. I had forgotten that this was in there. Um, sort of missing the outside corner, so that's fine. Uh, what's this one? Oh, all right, here we go. Here's Elderwood Scion. Um, I didn't understand the artwork before, and I certainly don't now. Um, this has a lot of text that I don't know what the text is because I can't really read it. Um, I don't need to. And this looks like it might be like oil or something. Like, and most of these are like water, and there's the iced tea Jared. I think this is like, I don't know, maybe like baby oil or something. It's not, who knows? Uh, <laughs> I didn't do that. But, oh, this is a blasted genius that got left in a puddle of water. It's still bad. Um, I, there's all this is like a sort of dragon maze like theme going on here like I left my draft deck on the table and now it's destroyed and in Mr. P's hands um, hey this guy just go okay this is a three card combo you play this you play this you play this you pour water on them you're good okay um, hey you can play that combo with flash you've had that out um, that's a mountain okay we're getting down to the bottom here um, Kumano Master Yamabushi, um, he's, was stuck to another card, I think. Um, that's, oh, th uh, he might have, it's possible that these were, like, stuck together like this. I can sort of see a sort of, like, matching up action going on here. Uh, this gains life and is bad. Um, this is a pretty warped, well, this again sort of is like if you need to drink something and it's a bowl. Uh, this is a Soul Warden. Yeah, okay. Essence Warden, sorry, I know that because um, when you see that action, you know it's for real. Um, we're getting down to the sort of the dregs of it all, except we still got something hot to show you. Um, 
like when you're playing the laundromat deck, you can't lose the game anyways, because it's the laundromat deck. But this guy, like, you really can't lose the game because he's in play. Um, that's a land. So this is like my favorite thing in the entire world. Um, because when people talk about pimping out their deck, and God knows I want to pimp out my deck, like, this is how you pimp your deck, okay? Like, you know, I, I don't even know, like, how to really fully capture the fact that this went through the laundry in somebody's pocket, and it's just a thing of beauty. And, like, when I put it in a sleeve, well, I, yeah, okay, it sort of goes in a sleeve. There's some space left over in the sleeve because, you know, it's suffered, like, a 20% reduction. That's good. When you draw that, you know what's going on. Um, the thing about the Laundromat deck, though, is I don't want to limit myself to just these cards. Go over there, Laundromat deck. Um, so, we got some other cards here that, um, you know, we're not going to go through all these, because, my God, who wants to watch that? Um, but, as you can see, there's sort of, like, um, a variety of other things that people have... Um, these are all other cards that, you know, this is, like, hey, how you doing? Um... So the point of the story is that, like, when your Mox Diamond gets destroyed and you don't know what to do, well, you could throw it away. Or you could build an EDH deck, because the point of EDH is to play with stupid cards and have a nice time and cast Mana Echoes that allows your opponents to go infinite accidentally. Um, yeah, it's good. Um, so, oh, 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 I may have to find space for this Suntail Hog, my god. Actually, remember this. I found this uh, in the ground by the dumpster in the middle of a rainstorm. And I was like, come home with me, little fella. He came home with me. I dried him out. And now he's ready to get in there and get some action. This, so, uh, this was an enlightened tutor that then became an abyssal harder. And now it's hoarder. Sorry. And now it's actually an enlightened tutor again. It's like a butterfly that went wrong or something. Um, oh, this one is cheaper because it's alpha. Um, yeah. So I think that, you know, you sort of, you get the point. I don't know. Do they, oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, they, I thought those were stuck together still. Uh, yeah, those are going in. Um, I think that we get the point in the laundry. Oh, ooh. Snow-covered mana base incoming. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, foray into stupidity. And um, just remember when you build EDH decks, like, build something that you think is awesome, that you have a good time playing, and it's all good. Yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. You're the best. Please subscribe and favorite.